Hi, welcome to our uh, Pharma Topics channel. Welcome to the B Farm 6th semester uh, Pharmacology 3, uh, Unit 1. Uh, it deals with the pharmacology of uh, drugs acting on the respiratory system. Uh, it is having uh, six subdivisions. Uh, we are going to study the drugs uh, dealing with the anti asthmatic drugs, drugs used in uh, management of uh, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, expectorants, antitussives, nasal decongestants, and respiratory stimulants. In this section, we are going to see 19 questions which will be useful for your examination preparation. And the first question in this uh, section is uh, classification of anti asthmatic drugs. It includes uh, 9 classifications. You just remember 9 classifications. First 3 are concerned with bronchodilators, second three, 2 are concerned with leukotrains, uh, and next 2 are concerned with corticosteroids. The last are additional mast cell stimulators and uh, anti IgE antibody. The bronchodilators include uh, beta 2 sympathomimetics, methylxanthines, and anticholinergics. Leukotrain includes two things one is uh, leukotriene synthesis inhibitor and leukotriene antagonist. Then uh, corticosteroids may be systemic or inhalational. Then mast cell stabilizers and anti IgE antibody omalizumab. We are going to discuss these things in brief in separate sections. Uh, so you just remember nine things. The question number two is uh, classification of drugs used in uh, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. It is very similar to the drugs used in treatment of asthma, uh, but it includes only four uh, classifications. They are the bronchodilators, which are very useful in asthma also. They are uh, beta 2 sympathomimetics, methylxanthines, anticholinergics and passport diesterase inhibitor. The beta 2 sympathomimetics include uh, salbutamol, terbutaline, salmetrol, parmetrol, methylxanthines include theophylline, aminophylline, doxophylline, anticholinergics include ipratropium and uh, teotropium. The passport diesterase inhibitor includes roflumilast. The third question is, uh, they may ask a, a, a brief uh, note on uh, beta 2 agonist. It is a very important question. Uh, you can give uh, the classification of beta 2 agonists. There are two types. One is uh, short acting beta 2 agonists. They are called SABA, salbutamol, terbutaline, bilotrol, phenotrol, and uh, procaterol. Uh, Long acting uh, beta 2 agonists, uh, LABA, they are salmetrol, parmetrol, r formetrol olodactrol, and indactrol. Mechanism of action they activate adenyl cyclase, increase cyclic AMP, cause uh, bronchodilation. Cyclic AMP additionally reduces the release of inflammatory mediators uh, from the mast cells and it also improves the mucociliary clearance. Actually, the SABAs are fast acting drugs. They should be used only for symptom control and if, they, if uh, the patient requires uh, more than three times per week, this is an indication that they need additional inhalational corticosteroid uh, to their prescription. Uh, SABAs are not suitable for uh, prophylaxis of uh, asthma, whereas uh, LABAs are useful for prophylaxis of asthma. Parmetrol is a unique drug. It's fast acting and long acting. So it is used for control of acute attacks of asthma and as well as for prophylaxis. The adverse effects of uh, beta 2 agonists because they are sympathomimetics. It includes a muscle tremor, tachycardia, hypokalemia, hypoxemia. Uh, the chronic use of LABAs can lead to tolerance and it, uh, the dose has to be increased further. Question number four, uh, it's a short note on salbutamol. Salbutamol is uh, a short acting beta 2 agonist. Mechanism is same, activation of adenyl cyclase, increasing the cyclic AMP, uh, which uh, reduces the release of inflammatory mediators uh, from the mast cells, inhibits uh, the mucociliar microvascular leakage and improves the mucociliary clearance. The pharmacological actions of uh, salbutamol, it is available as uh, pressurized meter dose uh, inhaler, respules, tablet and syrup formulation. The inhaler acts within 5 minutes. It causes quick reversal of bronchospasm and its action lasts for 2 to 4 hours. Uh, it is not suitable for uh, round the clock uh, profile axis because it is uh, short acting. Oral formulation undergoes extensive first pass metabolism in the liver and uh, has 4 to 6 hours duration of action. Because of four, uh, more uh, frequent adverse effects, the oral preparations are reserved for patients who cannot uh, use inhalers 
are used as adjuvant to other drugs in severe asthma. The adverse effects include same as sympathomimetics, uh, muscle tremor, tachycardia, hypokalemia and hypoxemia. The next question, question number 5 is uh, methyl xanthines. They may ask a short note on methyl xanthines or a short note on theophylline. The methyl xanthines uh, include caffeine, theophylline and uh, theobromine. Among this, theophylline is very widely used. The mechanism, theophylline exerts uh, bronchodilating effect, anti-inflammatory and immunosuppressant effects through inhibition of phosphodiesterase enzymes, blockade of adenosine receptors and inhib inhibition of calcium influx in the respiratory tract. After oral administration, theophylline is well absorbed. It is very widely distributed. It is converted to inactive metabolites uh, by uh, uh, cytochrome uh, enzyme 1A2, which is primarily excreted in urine. Children and uh, cigarette uh, smokers metabolize the drug uh, rapidly and so they require higher doses. Theophylline, uh, it's a narrow therapeutic index drug. Uh, the serum levels of, uh, the therapeutic serum levels of uh, theophylline includes 5 to 15 uh, milligram per uh, liter. The factors increasing the clearance of theophylline, uh, they are enzyme inducers uh, of CYP1A2, rifampicin, barbiturates, ethanol, childhood, and factors uh, decreasing the clearance of theophylline include enzyme inhibitors of uh, CYP1A2 such as cimetidine, erythromycin, ciprofloxacin, xyluton, zafirlucast. Uh, then uh, in case of uh, some pathological conditions also uh, theophylline dose uh, should be increased in case of congestive heart failure, liver disease, pneumonia, viral infection and vaccination. The therapeutic uses, it is used to treat asthma, COPD and neonatal apnea. The adverse effects of theophylline are mainly gastrointestinal, abdominal pain, nausea, vomiting. CNS adverse effects include headache, anxiety, restlessness, uh, dizziness and seizures. Cardiovascular adverse effects include hypotension, bradycardia and premature, premature ventricular contractions and tachycardia. The sixth question is uh, anticholinergics used in treatment of asthma and uh, uh, COPD. Uh, they may ask this as a short note. The list of anticholinergics used in asthma and COPD include ipratropium, theotropium, amiclidinium and rivifenacin. Rivifenacin is a new drug. The mechanism of action, muscarinic receptor antagonist that produces bronchodilating effects through blockade of bronchoconstricting effect of the vagus nerve stimulation. Actually, they are slow acting and less efficacious than the beta 2 agonists. Uh, they are used as uh, bronchodilators of choice in patients uh, of bronchial asthma uh, as an add-on therapy to the beta blocker uh, therapy. These drugs are effective in moderate to severe uh, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, infants with acute bronchitis. They reduce rhinorrhea in patients with allergic or viral rhinitis. The adverse effects include uh, the anticholinergic uh, adverse effects such as uh, dry mouth, blurred vision, uh, restlessness. The next question is uh, inhalational uh, corticosteroids. It may be asked in uh, short notes. The list includes uh, beclomethasone, budisonide, momethasone, fluticasone, clunisolide, cyclisonide and uh, triamcinolone. Mechanism, they inhibit uh, phospholipase A2, decrease the activity of inflammatory leukocytes and reduce the production of prostaglandins and uh, inflammatory leukotrienes. They are used uh, mainly for long-term prevention of asthmatic attacks, rather to treat the acute attacks of bronchospasm. Corticosteroids uh, can reduce the number and severity of symptoms and decrease the need for beta-2 agonists and other bronchodilators. The adverse effects include hoarseness of voice and oropharyngeal candidiasis. The eighth question is uh, master cell stabilizers. The list includes uh, chromoline sodium, nedochromil and lodoxamide. Uh, they block the influx of calcium and prevent degradation of mast cells uh, by any inflammatory stimuli and reduce the release of histamine, leukotrienes and other substances that cause airway inflammation. They are mainly used for long-term prevention of asthmatic attacks rather than to treat bronchospasm. Chromoline sodium is also used to treat a systemic uh, mastocytosis. It's a rare condition characterized by infiltration of liver, spleen, uh, lymph nodes uh, and GIT with the mast cells. It is also used to treat ulcerative colitis and food allergy. Adverse effects, uh, they are actually mostly non-toxic, rarely inhalational or ocular preparations 
can cause a localized pain and irritation. The ninth question, they may ask a short note on leukotrienes. The leukotrienes are lipid derived autocytes called as eicosanoids. The arachidonic is, uh, acid is generated from the membrane phospholipids which is uh, converted in the LOX pathway by 5-lipoxygenase. This enzyme associates with 5-lipoxygenase uh, activating protein that is FLAP to generate uh, the leukotrienes LTC4, LTD4 and LTE4. The leukotriene receptors uh, are cyst-LT1 receptors. They increase the activity of uh, leukocytes stimulate a mucus secretion and lead to airway inflammation and to a sustained bronchoconstriction. LTB4 is a chemotactic agent which mediates inflammation in asthma. LTC4 and D4 are a slow reacting substance of anaphylaxis SRSA which is involved in bronchial asthma. The drugs related to the leukotrienes are two categories. Leukotriene receptor antagonists such as Zafir Leukast, Monty Leukast and Ira Leukast. Uh, which are useful in allergic asthma, aspirin induced asthma and exercise induced asthma. Lipoxygenase inhibitor Xylutan is indicated for prophylaxis and treatment of asthma. They may ask a short note or a very short note on Monty Leukast. Uh, it comes under anti-asthmatic and anti-allergic agent. It's a leukotriene antagonist. It blocks the cyst LT1 receptors for LTC4, LTD4 and LTE4, prevents airway inflammation, edema, bronchoconstriction. Secretion of viscous mucus and inhibits early and late phases of bronchoconstriction. They are used uh, for long term uh, prevention of asthma, allergic rhinitis in adults and children. The next uh, important drug, uh, question number 11, is omalizumab. They may ask a short note on omalizumab. Uh, it is a humanized monoclonal antibody that blocks the binding of IgE to IgE receptors and prevents their activation by allergens. It also binds to IgE receptors and the, on the inflammatory cells uh, such as T cells, B cells, macrophages, eosinophils and inhibit chronic inflammation. Homalizumab uh, actually reduces the levels of circulating immunoglobulin E. They are used for treatment of uh, severe asthma, reduces the requirement of oral and inhalational corticosteroids and markedly reduces asthma exacerbations. It is also useful in protecting against anaphylaxis during immunotherapy. The question number 12 is a bambutrol. It is a ester uh, prodrug of terbutylene. It is hydrolyzed slowly in the plasma and lungs by pseudocholine esterases. Uh, it is used for uh, treatment of nocturnal and uh, chronic asthma. The next question number 13 is uh, ephedrine. Its mechanism of action, it is a uh, an agonist of alpha 1, beta 1 and beta 2 used as a bronchodilator but its use is obsolete now because of the availability of more safe and effective drugs. Question number 14 is roflumilast. A roflumilast and its metabolites are selective inhibitors of type 4 uh, phosphodiesterase which is present in the lung tissue uh, and increases the intracellular levels of cyclic AMP. It is used to reduce the risk of uh, Chronic obstructive pulmonary disease exacerbations in patients with uh, chronic bronchitis. It's not a bronchodilator and it has no utility in the acute episodes. Adverse effects, diarrhea, nausea, weight loss. Less common is psychiatric illness. Question number 15 is uh, expectorants. They may ask a short note of uh, expectorants or they may ask as mucokinetics. Both are same. They increase the amount and hydration of secretions and facilitates coughing up of mucus and other material from the lungs. The list of expectorants are guaifenesin, sodium citrate, potassium citrate, potassium iodide, tolu balsam, wasaka and ammonium chloride. Guaifenesin is useful in patients with thick, tenacious respiratory tract secretions, in patients with a dry, non-productive cough and in patients with sinusitis to increase airway hydration. Potassium iodide directly irritates the bronchial glands and increase the bronchial secretions. It may cause flaring up of acne, thyroid disorders and potassium iodide is contraindicated in pregnancy. The question number 16 is mucolytics. Uh, the list of mucolytics include bromexin, ambroxol, acetylcysteine, carbocysteine and tornase alpha. Mucolytics uh, dissolve the thick mucus by dissolving the chemical bonds within the secretions and lowers the viscosity of respiratory secretions. 
Bromexin is a derivative of alkaloid obtained from Pasaka. Uh, it depolymerizes uh, the mucopolysaccharides, liberates uh, uh, the lysosomal enzymes, breaks the tenacious sputum. The adverse effects include rhinorrhea, lacrimation, and uh, hypersensitivity. The therapeutic uses of uh, mucolytics. They are useful in patients who have thick tenacious sputum and those who undergo tracheostomy, osmotic uh, bronchitis, and cystic fibrosis. Question number 17 is antitussives. Uh, locally acting antitussives are menthol. Opioid antitussives include codeine and hydrocodone. Non opioid antitussives include noscapine and dextromethorphan. The antitussives uh, they act locally, anesthetize the afferent nerves that initiate cough reflex. That means they suppress the cough and uh, opioids inhibit the cough center in the medulla. Codeine is an opioid antitussive less potent than morphine. It is standard and effective antitussive, but uh, because of the abuse potential and uh, constipation as an adverse effect, uh, it is not widely used nowadays. At higher doses, it can cause a respiratory depression and drowsiness. It is contraindicated in asthmatics and children. Noscapine is equally effective as codeine and useful in treating spasmodic cough. It can release histamine and produce bronchoconstriction in asthmatics. Dextromethorphan is a NMDA antagonist, non-sedating, non-constipating and does not depress the mucociliary function of a respiratory tract. It is widely used in the uh, cough preparations. Next is uh, nasal decongestants. In a short note uh, they may ask in uh, nasal decongestants. Question number 18. The oral nasal decongestant is uh, pseudoephedrine. Topical nasal decongestants available as nasal drops. They include uh, xylometasolin, oxymetasolin, and nafasolin. They actually activate the alpha 1 receptors in the venules and alpha 2 receptor agonism in the arterioles of the nasal tissues, which produce a vasoconstriction and relieve nasal congestion. They relieve nasal congestion in patients with uh, allergic or vasomotor rhinitis in patients with uh, upper respiratory tract infections. The topical nasal decongestants uh, cause uh, rebound hyperemia and worsening of symptoms with chronic use or when the drug is stopped, it may cause after congestion. Oral nasal decongestants uh, may cause hypertension. The last question in this section is uh, question number 19, respiratory stimulants. The drugs, uh, they are the drugs used for treatment of dyspnea and uh, COPD. So they include a slow release morphine, nebulized morphine, nebulized furosemide, dihydrocodine, and diazepam. The ventilatory stimulants are uh, useful in ventilation uh, when it is reduced in case of overdose of sedatives in uh, post anesthetic uh, respiratory depression and idiopathic hypoventilation. The list of uh, respiratory stimulants include doxapram, almitrin, astazolamide, naloxone, and plumase nil. Uh, the doxapram at low doses stimulate the carotid receptors and high doses stimulate uh, medullary respiratory centers. Almitrin selectively stimulates uh, peripheral chemoreceptors and improves ventilation only in hypoxia. Long term use of almitrin is associated with risk of peripheral neuropathy. Astazolamide induces uh, metabolic acidosis and stimulates uh, ventilation. Naloxone is a opioid antagonist indicated only if ventilatory depression is due to overdose of opioids. Plumase nil is a benzodiazepine receptor antagonist indicated only if ventilatory depression is due to overdose of benzodiazepines. I hope uh, it's a very short nutshell information for your exam preparation as a fast rush you can prepare easily. Uh, the text contents I believe it could be useful. Thank you for listening. Happy learning. Kindly share this to more of your friends. Kindly go through all the series of the BFARM 6th semester which is available in Pharma Topics channel and encourages. Thank you for listening. Thank you.